everybody, and welcome back to The Spiritual Leader. I am your host, Darren Baldwin, and I am joined now three times in a row with my wife, or by whatever, Laura's here, and we're glad to have her. <laughs> <laughs> kind of lost my little intro uh, points there. Um, Laura, you're a blessing. You're not only a blessing to this podcast, you're a blessing to my life. This is true. You're a great mom. You're an awesome pastor, and uh, I think you're kind of you're the bee's knees. You're really the real deal. And, um, you know, Laura and I used to not like each other when we were teenagers <laughs> and, uh, we actually despised one another, but the, God, the plan of God was for us <laughs> to come together, come uh, together right now. The greater purpose. There was a higher together. purpose. And yeah. I stand on the word of the Lord that says what God has joined together let not man separate or divide. Amen. So we're going to stick it out. We're going all the way to the end. Uh, Laura may slap me a couple of times before we get there, but we're getting there, son. (laughs) We are going to go to the end. Amen. We're going to finish our course. We're going to run our race with joy. Hallelujah. So Laura, we've been talking about the church. Yes. Uh, we've been talking about, uh, yeah. which is a subject you're super passionate about. It's exciting uh, times that we're living in. (laughs) Man, this is, in no other time in history is is there a better time to live in right now and being a part of the church and yeah. what God is doing it's in all, the local church. It's all coming to a head right now. Yeah. The fullness of time, the fullness of the plan of God, a culmination, a tipping point, yeah. a prophetic overload. It's literally, you are, somebody said this the other day, Laura. God could have put you in any point in history, but he put yeah. you here now. Yeah. Glory to God in the church's finest hour. Well, what's exciting to me is there are many people, I mean, some old timers, they've been, they've been in the church for many, mm. many decades now, and they've been holding fast, and they've been steady, and they've been faithful, and they've been committed. You know, they've, they've kept their hand to the, to the, to the plow. plow, and they've been <laughs> really contending for, like, this this end time revival, wow. this great move of God. And I, I know that some people, you know, they don't believe that that's going to happen, but we serve a good God. We serve a, 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 a God of mercy and grace. And I just hmm. see, and it's the goodness of God that leads men to Glory repentance. To so God. I see before you know, everything comes to an end. It's like it's going to be God's finest hour of just hmm. a display of his glory. And how's that how is that going to be manifested? It's going to be manifested through the church. Glory you know, to it's the God. gates of hell shall not prevail against what? The not, the, not the individual. Nope. Not this organization wow. or that organization, but against the church. It's that body. It's that culmination of those coming together. Mm. And we heard a, a well-known minister give a powerful prophecy for 2021. Mm. And um, it just, it really resonated on the inside of me. And I just wanted to read a yeah. little bit of it. It says, we believe 2021 will be a major turning point for the church and our nation. We will see the church rise up and usher in the biggest revival we have ever witnessed. People's hunger for God and the life only he can provide will grow and change our world. It also means our obedience, our obedience will be Mm. vital to see everything God has planned come to pass. It's time for the church to rise up and take her place in 2021. It's time, this is the part I like, it's time to remind ourselves why assembling is non-negotiable. Glory to God. We've got a job to do, Darren. That's powerful. And there is a revival that will break forth. And I know people think, oh, what's going to break forth? Forth, you know, over there on the street corner, this and that. No, it's it's going to break forth out of the church, mm. and then it's going to be a spilling over and a tipping point. And it's going to spill over in the streets. It's going to spill over in our communities. It's going to spill over into our regions where our nation is is uh, um, touched by the power and the glory of God. Glory but God. it's going to happen in the church house. Yeah, and that's uh, what a powerful prophecy that is. And I received that. Uh, I received that, and. Everything that we do right now is for the building of the local church and the body of Christ. Um, Any other work that we do beyond that is still focused on the strengthening of church members, members of the body of Christ. It's literally what we've given our lives to as well. I watched your mom and dad for over 26, 7 years. They pastored, plus Mm -hmm. 10 years before that, served as faithful church members. So they've given 
well over 40 years of their life to the local church. And I don't think your your mom and dad would, if they had it to do over again, would change a thing. No. Uh, they would continue to pour out their blood, sweat, and tears for the local church because they had a revelation, Laura. The local church is God's plan for the earth. You have a revelation that it's not just about me. Mm-hmm. It's not just about the individual, but there's something bigger than me that I'm called to be a part of, and I'm simply called to play my part. You know, there's a lot of people out in the world nowadays, and they want you know their their claim to fame. They want their microphone. They they want their name to be lit up in lights or to be known. And and if that's the, the avenue that God has for you, then that's the place you want to be. But the place that you should desire and hunger for is the place that God has for you. And it may be that you're just a faithful and committed church member that's, you know, faithful and and tithing, faithful and sowing and advancing the kingdom of God like that. And then you going in your job and you loving on those that are, Mm -hmm. you know, that are your coworkers and ministering them. It may be that you're called to be a prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't know your name. They don't know Mm -hmm. who you are, but here you are on your knees, Mm -hmm. you know, every morning praying and interceding Mm -hmm for the church. So whatever that place that God has called you to, and how do you find that place? How do you find that purpose? You find it in the local church. Yes. I mean, in, in Lois Houcher's book called Together, she's like, you cannot find your purpose apart from the local church. You may stumble upon some things by accident. Yeah. You know, you've got some giftings and talents and you pursue those giftings and talents, but to find the complete and full purpose that God has for you, that's going to take place in a local setting and that's been my story your story too we have literally grown in and through the power of the local church uh enough said on that right it's just it's it's god's plan okay if you're not in a local church you need to find out where god's planted you okay you don't have to pray about it whatever you'll know the lord will lead you he's smart yeah. Uh, he, he, it's not overcomplicated for him. You just got to be listening and be, allow him to lead you. He'll put you in the place where he wants you. Uh, you know, it's sad, Laura. I've seen people move from one state to another. They left the place of their assignment and their church yeah. that God planted because them. Because they were going to a better job, better for, for position. For a job that paid ten dollars to $20,000 more yeah. a year, potentially. So they literally sacrificed the plan of God yeah. for them and their family. Somebody said, yeah, but can't God still use them wherever they move? Well, Yes, but God, he, he can still use them, but it won't be where he's actually called them. Yeah. And if you're not planted where God plants you, you're not planted. Yeah. Uh, you could still live like a Christian. You can talk like a Christian. You could still preach the gospel to people. Some say, well, that's good enough for me. But the thing is, Lord, when you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ at the end of your life, he's going to ask you, what did you do with the plan of God that I gave you that I put in your heart? And boy, that's gonna be that's gonna be a day where we're rewarded for our faithfulness. We're rewarded for the the completion or non completion of the plan that God specifically had for us. We watched this video, God, years ago, and it was uh, a, a minister that most of us know, a famous author, and he did that video. Yeah. People standing before Jesus, and they say. Uh, I did uh, such and such. I became a businessman and gave millions into the gospel. And then Jesus speaks back to this individual and said, I never called you to be a businessman. Yeah. I called you to be a pastor. Or I called you to go to this nation and be a missionary. Yeah. I never called you to be a, bus- a businessman. But Lord, I gave money and I did this. It doesn't matter. Yeah. God's plans are not decided. They're discerned or discovered and then acted upon, yeah. right? And it showed person after person, right? I did this for you, Lord. Some were, Some said, I mean, they were pastors. I pastor. And he's like, I didn't call you to pastor. <laughs> I <laughs> called said, you to start businesses. Yeah, to give. It's, <laughs> hey, folks, the, one of the things people don't realize about becoming a Christian, and I, this, I despise this in our culture uh, today, at, I say this and been saying this for 10 years. At the heart of Christianity, the crux of Christianity, yeah. there's a death there's involved. A death. It's no and longer I. Yes, Jesus died, but when we come to Jesus, guess who else dies? We, we die. Galatians 2.20. Yeah. It's I have been crucified, crucified with Christ. Christ. It's no longer I that lives, yeah. but Christ, Christ that lives in me. me. The life I live now, I live by my faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is a consistent 
theme or thread to the, through the entire New Testament, Laura. Yeah. It's not my will. Even the Lord Jesus Christ himself while on this earth, he said, Father, if there's any way that this cup can pass from before yeah. me, he said, please give me another option here. Jesus did not want to go to the cross. Yeah. Jesus did not want to be crucified. He didn't want to go to hell for you. But he did it. And then he said these words, nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will. Yeah. Lord, to be a faithful member in your place in the body of Christ takes pretty much, uh, yeah, the, again, the heart of Christianity, there's a death involved. It takes us dying daily to ourselves. It takes us saying, I'm not going to pursue my own selfish ambitions, my dreams and goals and desires. That's big in the Christian world. Yeah. You know, everybody wants a success guru to come in and teach them how to be successful. Jesus never called you in and of itself to be successful. He called you to do what he called you to do. Yeah. For you to walk in that, you've got to say, this ain't about me. This is about him. Yeah. Jesus is so much smarter than you. I, it, it takes a humble person to probably realize that. Jesus knows what he's doing. He knows when he saved you, he already had a plan for your life, right? Your plan is in and connected to a local body of believers. We read yesterday, Laura, about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Yeah. Five five major gifts that Jesus gave to the church world, his body. Those gifts, Laura, their job is to equip believers mm -hmm. to actually function in their role in the body and be fruitful in that role. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. We've usually recognized pastors and evangelists over the last 100 years or 200 years, whatever. But there's actually five major gifts, and God uses every one of them. We're not getting into that today. Maybe at another podcast we can but those gifts primarily function in and throughout the operation of a local church, meaning this, you and I are never gonna grow unless we're planted in a local body where those five offices are present and active and doing their role in yeah. equipping the rest of the body to function and do the work that God's called them to do individually and corporately. I wanna read this really quick, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and you can write these down and look back over them later. It says this, listen to this, 1 Corinthians 12, starting in verse 12. It says this, for the, as the body is one and has many members, one body, many members. Yeah. It says for all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. One verse, uh, 1 Corinthians 12. It, it goes on to say, verse 14, for in fact, the body is not one member, but many. It goes on to teach about you know, the different parts of the body. Then it goes on in verse 19. If they were all one member, where would the body be? Again, we're a body. It goes through this chapter, Laura, 1 Corinthians 12, and it says over and over and over and over again, we are a body, yeah. which means if you're a Christian, you have a part or you are a part or member of that body. Yeah. If you don't ever get in your, folks, this is everyday life here. If you don't ever get in your place in the body, you are not functioning in the body. You're just saved. And we've had that mentality in the church world for two millennia. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. Glory to God. But that's not, that's not good enough because the plan of God is that we come together as a body yeah. and we begin to function. Everybody has a role. Listen yeah. to this. Romans chapter 12. Again, it goes on to say this. Verse 3, Romans 12, 3. It says, don't shout me down because I'm preaching real good. Romans 12, three says, for I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Verse four, for as we have many members in one body, all the members do not have the same function. Yeah. Are you listening? It goes on to say, We're, we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Yeah. Okay, then it goes on to say, having then gifts that are different from one another, let each of us operate in the grace that's been given to us. If we've been called to prophesy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Yeah. If we've been called to ministry, let us use it, uh, or ministry, let us be, let us use it in our ministry. Let the teacher teach. Mm -hmm. 
Let um, the one who exhorts, exhort. Let the one who's a giver, financial giver, let him give liberally. Let him who's a leader, let him lead with diligence. Let him who's a, a, a giver of mercy, let him show mercy with all cheerfulness. And then it goes on, just ties the thing together. The point is, Laura, we're a body. Yeah. Every one of those little things. In back to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it goes on to say, I'll, I'm just going to turn back there, and then, you, then we're going to wrap this up. It says this, verse 28, God has appointed these in the church. I'm back at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, oh, verse, verse 28. 28. It says this, and God has appointed these in the church. Mm -hmm. First, apostles. Second, prophets. Third, teachers. After that, miracles, gifts of miracles, people that operated miracles. Um, then gifts of healings, which we just talked about the other night. Um, helps administrations. That's one of my favorite ones out of that list. Somebody said, you don't want miracles? No, we need organization in the body of Christ. All the good, all the organizers that are called to organize the body, they're out in these uh, Fortune 500 companies and they're making worldly men and women billionaires while the church world is unorganized. It's a disgrace. And the people, you've got to realize your administrative gift, your leadership gift, your ministry gift is absolutely essential for the body to be successful. If you're not in your place, the body's lacking in that area. It's 100% reality. So listen to this, Laura. The last thing it said, administration, varieties of tongues. We just talked about some of this the other day. He said, are all apostles? No. Are all prophets? No. Are all teachers? No. Are all workers of miracles? No. Do all have gifts of healings? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No, everybody's got a different function in the body. Yeah. The, thing, the way that this thing works is when each of us finds our place and starts functioning, and like we say, we bring our supply. Yeah. I said this years ago, a practical thing about money in the church. If every church member tithed, there would, ne there would be not one unmet need in the, in the world, really, as far as it is concerned, the body of Christ. But the statistics show 10 to 13%, maybe less now, actual people in the Christian church tithe. So we're short finances because people are not bringing their supply. That's a very practical, natural example, but the same holds true for the spiritual. Yeah. If we don't bring our gifting, if we don't bring our anointing, if we don't bring our faithfulness, all through the list. Without that present, the body will be lacking. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm here to tell you, Laura, prophetically, this thing is turning around yeah. because the Lord is moving supernaturally. What's gonna cause people to get in their place? Folks, I'm gonna tell you one supernatural way that this thing is gonna cause people to get in their place, the rain. Say, Pastor Darren, what is the rain? The rain is the outpouring of God's spirit. Yeah. The rain is the outpouring of grace. Grace yeah. is God dealing with your heart. Grace is God putting his ability in your life. Mm -hmm. Grace is God opening up the door for unlimited favor to happen in your life, right? Threefold grace. When rain starts poured out from heaven, this is a prophetic promise, the latter and the early rain being poured out, the glory of the former house and the latter house. That's what we're stepping into right now in 2020 and 2021. The church is literally stepping into the greatest outpouring in the history of the world. God's spirit will be so prevalent among the earth that it's been prophesied that you'll walk outside, Laura, people out there will see a glow on your face because the glory of God will be visible upon you. Folks, if it could happen with Moses in the Old Testament, it will happen in this new, new dispensation. It's coming to pass. But people's hearts are gonna begin to be opened there's going to be such a tremendous outpouring of finances into the body of Christ, the church. There's going to be people starting to realize by spiritual something on the inside of them that they're called to do something more than what they're doing. Yeah. It's literally going to be a transition and a shift where people are just going to supernaturally step into their place. Yeah. And a great and tremendous work will be done. Amen. And I'm glad I'm here to be a part of it. That's why we say <laughs> the best is yet to come. Amen. Yeah. Listen, as we end this today, if you're not in your place, my God. Start you, today. Start today. <laughs> turn this podcast off. Get down on your face before the Lord and repent. And just say, God, I want to be a part of this end time revival. Stop building the actual world that enslaves you. The world system. Stop being in the middle of all their folly. It's, it's, it's folly. <laughs> like one of the Old Testament writers said, get in the plan of God. He created this whole thing created the earth, the heavens and the earth. He's got a plan and a purpose for you. 
get in on that and find your place in the body. Amen. That's This thing's going to happen. Guess what? We're all going home soon. We're all going home soon. Everything in that book of Revelation and Daniel is all coming to pass. Armageddon, the whole kit and caboodle, it's all coming to pass. The church will be raptured. All the years of tribulation, all that stuff, you know, and somebody that's smarter than me just said, yeah, that's, we believe in mid-trib and post-trib. I don't care what you believe. Whenever you're going up, we're going up, okay? We're going up, and all those things in the Bible are going to come to pass. You better get on the right team and make sure you fulfill the plan of God. It's never too late. Somebody might say, oh, I've sinned. I've done terrible things. I've been through multiple marriages. I've committed terrible sins. Repent. The blood of Jesus is enough for you. It's enough for you to get back on track and move forward in what God has for you. Amen? Amen. I hope you received that today. I got that little bit of preaching on me right now. But listen, Laura and I love you, and we're praying for you. We're believing, man, that supernatural things are happening right now. Matter of fact, I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to ask the Lord to give you a breakthrough as a testimony to his goodness, glory to God, and plan for your life. Lord, I ask you to open up a supernatural door, an opportunity, a financial breakthrough, a physical healing, a manifestation, whatever it is, Lord, I ask you to confirm this word with signs and wonders that we've just released over these last three podcasts. Release a supernatural sign to confirm your word in this listener's heart right now. Just tell the Lord right now, I received that. It may come now in this instant. It may come today as you work. It may come tonight as you sleep. It may come as a dream. It may come as an idea, but it's coming. Believe and expect that God is performing his word right now. And it's going to be a testimony and a witness and an encouragement for you to get your behind in the place that God's called you. Listen, Laura and I love you. We're praying for you. We're believing that the best is yet to come as you choose and follow the plan of God. We'll see you real soon. Amen. We love you.